As an artist, I, I had a practice with these things, but then I also started doing curation. Um, and so this specifically happened because I was invited by a festival called Day for Nights. Um, and Day for Nights uh, essentially started uh, in 2015 with a person who said, I'm tired of festivals, music festivals. I want to do something that has a real impact on people where the, 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 the musical experience is only 50%, but the other 50% is the most amazing art that you could show. And when he reached out to me to collaborate with him, he didn't know what that kind of art should be. Uh, he thought maybe it could be graffiti or it could be you know, some film, who knows what. And, and so we started thinking together that it needed to be art that was spatial uh, because it was in Texas in a very, very big venue. And so what we needed was things that could be very big. And so, you know, making big sculptures or big paintings is very expensive, but if you have 10 lights, you can make a very big installation um, and, you know, take up a lot of space. So that's the route that we went. And, you know, these are some pictures of, of several of the exhibitions and events. We had some really great... One of the things that was amazing about this festival is that we had super great musicians, like Aphex Twin or Bjork or Justice or... Um, uh, Kenrick Lamar, New Order, Philip Glass. I mean, we had a very, very good musical curation. And then at the same time, we were presenting people with this like new media installation world that was surprising to them because it wasn't something that was commonly seen. Um, so we had, you know, these sort of uh, performances that were done inside of installations. We were trying to really merge music and arts as much as we could. And everything sort of at this very, very big scale. Um, so these are some shots that are from several of the years, and then um, I think, yeah, this is a video about the first year that we did. to do something that is normally never done, which is to mix crowds in an organic way. You know, uh, galleries have a certain type of crowd and music festivals have a certain type of crowd. Museum culture and gallery culture is in a way fairly isolated within our, within our larger society. And so it's exciting for me to reach new audiences and have different, different people see the work. And what's interesting is that since this type of art that's based on light and computation and interactivity is sort of an emerging field, we're giving these people an opportunity to, to get familiar with it and to then become curious about what else there is out there. Technology, music, and visual things are merging quickly. I think that people enjoy the combination and they enjoy going between these mediums. And I think in the future, there won't be a difference between them. And I think one of the things that makes this festival great also is that it puts them together. A lot of digital art festival mix uh, music and installations, art installations, but this festival uh, in particular has like big headliners that bring different kind of people and uh, we felt like a lot of people were not really aware of what this light art is or digital art is and looking at their reaction was really motivating because I think it felt pure. Today it would be boring to dissociate music and art of music and visual and I think it should be a new standard of festival. A lot of the musicians who are here performing at, at Day for Night are some of my favorites. Um, so being able to show alongside them is extraordinary for one. And to be in a place which is really elevating, putting things side by side, that for me that's really beautiful. And that, that's a kind of special thing and you don't see that, I haven't seen that in, in, in America at all. This, this kind of music festival. With so yeah, that was, that was our recap of the first year. Um, and then this is a video that shows the making of, of the second year, so you can kind of see the, the process of the building of the installations.
So that was the sort of making of the arts portion of the 2016 edition. Unfortunately, the festival only lasted three years. So it had its last edition in 2017. Um, but I continue to do this curation work. Um, I was once again invited to work with Google. Um, so they have this, this also this big event in uh, their, near their headquarters every year where they announce all their sort of big products. And they also wanted to have uh, art installations that were part of that. So specifically artists who work with code. Um, and so we did it for about three years. Um, and each year was a different theme. Um, the second year, these slides are really, we're more focused on machine learning, artificial intelligence. Um, and, you know, they, we were given a lot of space. Unfortunately, these, ex these exhibitions were very short. They were just for one day. So it was a lot of work to build them. But um, interesting when you have to work for such short time, time frames. Um, this was a beautiful piece that was done by a group uh, called Onformative, where they were basically algorithmically creating rivers. So they were analyzing the ways through satellite imagery how rivers are formed and how they evolve over time. And then they essentially created their own algorithm that was able to do that in a generative way. So it was like infinitely creating new rivers. Um, and this is an artist called Su Gueng Chung, who um, her practice is all about drawing in collaboration with robots. So she creates these stages where she essentially paints on paper and she has these little robots that she trained on her drawing methods. And so they essentially practice, they draw together. So it's a collaborative uh, effort. It's a really nice thing to, to watch. Um, and then another show that I curated um, in, when I was at Mana Contemporary, um, it was called That's Not It. And That's Not It was a show that I put together because after having done a lot of work with new media artists, um, it started becoming clear to me that the term new media was a little bit poor, not, not quite right. Uh, first of all, there's nothing really new about it. And then media means so many different things. Um, but there's also not really any good term for this kind of art. You know, you could say digital art or media art or technology art or whatever. Like there's all these terms, but they're all very bad. So the other thing that, that makes that the case is that these practices that involve technology are often very multidisciplinary. So some of them are really about sound, some of them are about visuals, some of them are about robotics or sensors or data. So it's, it's really a big variety of things. So in this show, I wanted to essentially exaggerate that and really show pieces that were extremely different from one another, but that all somehow when you saw them, you knew ah, this must be new media because there's something about it that you can recognize. Um, so this word in English, when we say that's not it, it's like it's when, when you're trying to remember a word but you can't remember it and then somebody tells you, oh, it's that, and you're like, no, 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 that's not it. So it's sort of this, this uh, when you're looking for the right word and you can't find it. So, you know, new media, big, big question.